Hi students, in this video I will discuss the Biber questions based on magnetic susceptibility of paramagnetic solution using Quinks 2 method. It is an important experiment in BTEC and BSC courses. And the principle of this experiment is based on the rise of the level of the solution in the magnetic field where we have used the ferric chloride solution, a paramagnetic solution in Quinks 2. It is a U-shaped tube. One side is thin and one side is wider in this Quinks 2. And there is change in the level of this solution when it is uh, put in this magnetic field. And using the change in the height, small h, we can easily find out the susceptibility k using this formula k minus k a equal to 2 mu naught rho minus sigma g small h by capital H square k a is the susceptibility of air or vacuum which is 0 rho is the density of liquid sigma is density of air g acceleration uh, due to gravity small h is the change in the height of uh, the solution and capital H is the magnetic field so using these parameters we can find out the value of k and this magnetic susceptibility k or chi it is a unitless quantity. So there are some basic Bible questions. First question is what is magnetic susceptibility? So the magnetic susceptibility is a measure of how much a material can be magnetized in an applied magnetic field and it is denoted by k or chi and it is ratio of the magnetization to the applied magnetization field intensity and this is a dimension less quantity because chi is m by h and m, h, m and h has same units so that's why chi is dimensionless m is magnetization and h is the magnetic field intensity what are paramagnetic materials so paramagnetic materials are those materials which get weakly magnetized in the direction of magnetic field and if the field is removed the material lose its magnetism and they have permanent dipole moment but their orientation is random which solution you have used for measurement we have used FeCl3 solution for measurement can you tell the name of some other ferromagnetic material there are other materials like manganese, oxygen, cupric oxide, manganese sulfate, etc. Why does the level of liquid rise with application of magnetic field? The level rises because when we apply some magnetic field, the dipoles get aligned and that's why we are getting the rise in the level of liquid. What is the cause of magnetism in a mat material? as all the materials are made of atoms and all atoms have electrons so the electrons have spin as well as the orbital motion and that causes uh, to have some magnetic moment and the magnetic properties in a material and the magnetic moments also depends on the number of electrons or basically it is on unpaired electrons if there are more unpaired electrons in a material the magnetic moments will be higher and the magnetization is defined as the magnetic moment per unit volume so this table shows that there are what are the differences in the dia para and ferromagnetic materials so according to magnetic susceptibility the dia para and ferromagnetic substances are defined as uh, if the susceptibility is negative and very small then it is diamagnetic material like uh, gold or copper they have minus 2 into 10 to the power minus 6 so it is negative value for diamagnetic uh, substances for paramagnetic materials the values are positive but very small suppose we have some platinum or manganese so we can see that it is in uh, 21 into 10 to the power minus 6 so it is positive value but very small positive and small that those are for the paramagnetic materials Whereas for the ferromagnetic materials, the values are positive and large. 
and if the values can be from 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 5 and according to their atomic or magnetic moment uh, they we can see in this uh, table that in case of diamagnetic material they do not have any uh, permanent dipole moment and their susceptibility or their magnetization is temperature independent it does not depend on the temperature whereas in case of the paramagnetic materials they have permanent dipole moment but they are oriented in a random direction and that's why they have very weak magnetization and the it depends susceptibility depends on temperature and it gives some straight line whereas in case of the ferromagnetic materials the type they have permanent dipole moment and they are all are aligned in one direction and that's why their magnetization is quite high and they show some kind of saturation above a certain field and they have a curie temperature curie temperature is that temperature below which all the moments are oriented in one direction and above this curie temperature they are randomly distributed and they become paramagnetic so curie temperature is the temperature when paramagnetic material changes into paramagnetic material the examples are for diamagnetic material are silver copper gold germanium etc whereas paramagnetic uh, are mag uh, manganese cupric oxide fecl3 mnso4 oxygen etc whereas the ferromagnetic are uh, iron cobalt nickel gallium and their alloys and here is one more term what is super paramagnetism so super paramagnetism is the phenomena in ferromagnetic materials they changes to paramagnetic materials below a certain size or when they become uh, from multi domain to single domain because in ferromagnetic material you, we have some domain structure and when we go below certain size maybe less than 20 nanometers then we can get the single domain particles and then they show paramagnetic behavior so paramagnetic behavior in a ferromagnetic material below a certain size is known as super paramagnetic what is quench 2 so as we have seen in first slide that it is like u shaped and which have two arms one with very narrow width as compared to other and the change in the liquid level of the narrow limb does not affect the liquid level of the wider limb and in this apparatus the rise in the liquid by the application of magnetic field is measured by traveling microscope in that experiment so can we perform this experiment to measure the susceptibility of paramagnetic solids so the answer will be no because there will no measurable change in case of the solid because with the magnetic field the rise or the change will be very small so we cannot measure such change as in case of the solids the bonds are very strong as compared to liquid so there will be no measurable change what is gauss meter and what is the unit of magnetic field a gauss meter is used for the measurement of magnetic field and usually <coughs> gauss and tesla are the unit for uh, magnetic field and gauss is smaller unit and tesla is big unit so one gauss is 10 to the power minus 4 tesla and the gauss meter contains a semiconductor crystal and due to the hall voltage in a magnetic field we can easily detect the magnetic field by converting this whole voltage into magnetic field so it is this digital gauss meter have a semiconductor sensor what is electromagnet and how the magnetic field is generated using an electromagnet an electromagnet is a type of magnet in which the magnetic field is produced by an electric current and according to ampere's law an electric current flowing in the wire creates a magnetic field around the wire and this principle is used in electromagnets electromagnets are made out of a coil of wire and magnetic field can be varied according to the current 
whereas in case of the permanent magnets the magnetic field is fixed so in permanent magnets the magnetic field is fixed whereas in electromagnets we can vary the magnetic field and what are the applications of paramagnetic materials so these are these materials are used for medical applications in drug delivery and in some mri devices magnetic imaging resonance devices and also these can be used for the sensitive measurements of uh, magnetic materials where we do not need any ferromagnetic signal and in these cases paramagnetic materials can be used as they have very weak magnetization or very low magnetic susceptibility so thank you for watching and uh, we will discuss some other experiment in next video thank you very much